In a recent YouTube video, former naval aviator Ward Carroll did an excellent debriefing on two F-14 accidents that resulted in the loss of the aircraft. Both accidents involved the loss of power in critical situations. The first accident was the compressor stall of an engine on takeoff, and the second incident was a compressor stall or loss of thrust on one of the engines on base turn to final. Even though this is an F-14 aircraft we're talking about, the fundamental aerodynamics behind these accidents are the same whether you're flying an F-14 or the mighty Luscom. Let's go up today and see if I can demonstrate. Wave off power. Raise your gear. Raise your gear. Power. Eject, eject. There's plane guard. You're launching off the carrier deck, you lose a right engine. Now you want to come in with the rudder. See, even I was, even me, I would have probably done the same damn thing, that natural human reaction with the ailerons, and then I caught myself and caught it with the rudder instead. As human beings, we are not naturally designed to fly. And the immortal words of Buzz Blaylock, former air tanker pilot, it is difficult to fly without feathers. So in certain critical events, it is very hard to overcome some basic human reactions. For example, if you're faced with a critical situation of a loss of thrust on takeoff and you are heading for the dirt, your first natural human reaction when you're heading for the dirt is to pull away from the earth. What happens when you pull back on the stick? You reach that critical angle of attack very quickly and the aircraft stalls. Remember, an aircraft stalls at only one critical angle of attack, but at any airspeed or at any attitude. If you're about to fall over sideways, your first natural human reaction is to break your fall and catch yourself by sticking your arm out. In the airplane, that natural human reaction manifests itself in the use of ailerons. When a wing drops, your natural human reaction is to pick it up with the ailerons. By picking it up with the ailerons, you increase the camber on this wing, increase the induced drag, and increase the yaw on this wing, and increase the chances that the very wing that you're trying to pick up is going to stall, further exacerbating the situation. Instead, you need to use the rudders. latest YouTube upload about the truth about Kara Holtgreen's fatal F-14 mishap. The fundamental aerodynamics remain the same whether you're in an F-14 or the Mighty Luscom. However, the Mighty Luscom is a much more gentle aircraft than the early model F-14s when it comes to stalls and falls. One of the first mishaps in the uh, F-14 um, well, in the F when the F-14 came out on board an aircraft carrier, was an engine failure on takeoff, loss of, loss of thrust on takeoff. What's the natural human reaction when you are close to the ground and you see the ground rushing up to you? It's to pull up, right? What's the natural human reaction if a wing drops? You want to pick it up with the ailerons. Both of those can exacerbate a situation at low airspeed and low altitude. The same, the same case happened in the F-14 community. So in this first example, the F-14 suffered a right engine compressor stall on takeoff from the carrier deck. F-14 is a twin engine aircraft. They're, they're basically centerline thrust, two engines close together. But nevertheless, when you lose one of those engines, it's going to roll to the roll into the dead engine. In this case, roll into the right, roll into the right. We'll simulate that day in the Luscom with the rudder. By the way, for the best dissertation on compressor stalls and what they are, check out uh, Agent Jay-Z's channel on compressor stalls. So here you are, taking off on the carrier deck, catapult launch. You're just at min airspeed right off the deck, right off the water, and you lose a right engine. You get that yaw going. You pull up and you give an aileron, what's going to happen first? That right wing's going to stall. Let's see if we can try that again. You're on the deck. You launch. You're mid-airspeed. You're right
right near your critical angle of attack. You, you lose a right engine, a yaws, you pull up, and you hit the ailerons, and there goes that right wing. Boom! Now, the Mighty Luscombe is very gentle to recover from. The F-14, it's going to just roll over on its back. In that case, it rolled over on its back. Ejection sequence was initiated, resulting in the loss of both crew members from the inverted position. So again, so then the Navy went back and rewrote the books. Natops written in blood, as, as Ward so well points out on his YouTube presentation there. So now look at the uh, bolt base for the F-14, and it's back to fundamental aerodynamics. You've got to pitch to maintain airspeed, not exceed the critical angle of attack, and recover using the rudder and power as required. If you just go cobbing the power to it in that situation, you might just very well exacerbate the whole situation. So, you're launching off the carrier deck, you lose a right engine, now you wanna come in with the rudder. See, even I was, even me, I would have probably done the same damn thing, that natural human reaction with the ailerons and then I caught myself and caught it with the rudder instead. And then power is required to carefully climb away from the situation. And it's very easy for me to do this, demonstrate this with 2020 hindsight and, um, and full knowledge of what's, what events is going to come ahead. So let's try that again. So you're launching off the carrier deck mid-airspeed, you lose that right engine, pitch down, power and rudder as required to fly it away from the sea. Don't jerk it with the ailerons, don't hammer the power. Rudder and AOA control. One more time. Pitching up. Bam, there goes that right engine. Pitch down, rudder, power, as required to recover. All right, years later, 1994, I think it is. Kara Haltgreen, one of the Navy's first female carrier-based fighter pilots. Made a big deal about it in the news. The airplane does not discriminate against race, creed, color, or gender. Aerodynamics, the fundamental aerodynamics remain the same. Now, in Laura's case, she had another worst-case scenario, a left-engine compressor stall, while on final approach for the carrier, while overshooting final. So, let's see how this works out. Of course, uh, on a carrier operation, again, you're working in the region of reverse command. You're working with the power on, trying to get the minimum energy to hit your mark. Grip that power back there. You're coming around the base turn to final. You're overshooting final a little bit, so you crank in a little more aileron. You get a compressor stall like that, and then you jerk that aileron over there, and there goes the left wing. Let's do that again. I didn't get the stick back far enough. I didn't get that natural human reaction of seeing the ocean coming up at me. So let's try that again. You're coming around the left base final turn. You're overshooting final. You rack up the turn a bit. There goes the left engine. And you pull right in on, and there goes the left wing. Ejection sequence is initiated by the back seater. Wave off power. Raise your gear. Raise your gear. Power. The back seater survives. The front seater does not. What's the correct technique on that? AOA, angle of attack, and rudder. Coming around the base turn to final. You're overshooting the final. You crank it up a bit. You lose that engine. Okay, rudder, rudder. Power as required. Pitch. 
is required and fly it out of there. Six thousand feet, we'll knock it off and climb back up. So special thanks to Ward Carroll for uh, bringing up the subject of about the use of rudder, angle of attack, slow flight, fundamental, basic aerodynamics. Let's get back home before this wind pipes up too much. And remember, the natural human instinct is universal. It affects all of us, and it just simply takes training, 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 practice, 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 to overcome our natural human limitations. As humans, we're not necessarily born to fly. We have to learn the skill and continuously practice it. Get out here and do these stalls and falls. So I hope this gives you a better understanding and a fundamental real-world application of stalls and falls no matter what aircraft you're flying. Thanks so much for your support of this channel and to all the patrons over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.